Hello, church family. My name is Cameron Franklin. I am the junior high pastor here at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa, and I have the incredible privilege of going uh, through this devotion series, and I am actually talking about Judas. And I know that's like kind of the dark or more difficult side of this story, but I think it is a, a key part, obviously a key part, but an incredible part um, for all of us to understand in a deeper way of God's incredible grace and God's incredible love. So if you guys have your Bibles, hopefully you do, and hopefully you're already on uh, Matthew chapter 26. Um, normally I have the students read for us, but since I don't have any students with me right now, um, I will be reading verses 14 to 16 of chapter 26. 26. Okay, so then one of the 12 called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and asked, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him, being Jesus, to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. So from that time, he sought an opportunity to betray him. So Judas has created this uh, this, or has it not created, but um, made this decision to um, betray Jesus, right? And we know Judas. He is one of Jesus's very close disciples, right? He has um, that inner working of the 12, and he is just one of Jesus's really close friends, and he decides to betray Jesus. And there's a lot of different reasons on why Judas did this, a lot of different theories, but Right? When it comes down to it, Judas asked for money, right? What are you willing to give me? And he had, uh, they agreed on 30 pieces of silver. I think the more difficult part of this story, uh, or something that we may not understand as well, is 30 pieces of silver was not an incredible amount of money, right? It wasn't this, he wasn't getting extremely rich from it, right? It was a nice little um, piece of money, but it wasn't this huge amount of money. And, uh, <clears throat> But all that to say, something that I have enjoyed over the years of obviously studying through this story and being taught this story and as well teaching this story is Jesus knowing what it is like to be betrayed, right? We have, Hebrews 4 says, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus Christ. And he knows, right, this is a bit of paraphrasing, but he knows what it is like to be tempted in all ways that we were tempted. Jesus was tempted in this moment, right? Jesus was tempted. He knew everything that was going on and knew that Judas was going to betray him and then did betray him. And then um, uh, later in the story that we'll learn about in the next few days, uh, but Jesus knew this was going to happen and did happen and didn't like destroy Judas, right? I would have gone ballistic. You were one of my friends. I fed you, I taught you, I loved you, and you're gonna betray me for a little bit of money, right? This is incredible. But what I love about it, and I know it's an odd thing to love, but what I love is that our high priest, our God, knows what it's like to be betrayed. And this story, I often even go to with our junior hires, right? When they have different friend dramas and, and feeling betrayed by their parents or even by God or, or by friends or just teachers, whatever the situation is, right? I bring them back, like Jesus knows what it's like. Jesus, Jesus can sympathize you, with you. Jesus knows how difficult these feelings are. And later, <clears throat> or uh, yeah, that's kind of one thing I want to encourage you guys with. And as well, I think it is incredible, but I'm taking a little bit of another passage. But later in this story, right, they have the Passover meal and communion. Um, but before they institute, before Jesus institutes communion, they're having this conversation at the Passover meal and Jesus, or one of the disciples is like, they're yeah, having this conversation, but Jesus says, one of you is going to betray me, right? And they're all like, oh, it's not going to be me. Is it me? Is it me? Is it me? And Judas says, yeah. Or Judas says, is it me? And Jesus says, yes, right? And then that's when Judas leaves and, and we know the rest of the story. But the reason why I'm pointing that out is Jesus gave Judas another chance 
Jesus loved Judas. Jesus died for Judas. Jesus gave him another chance to repent of this sin, right? To repent and not um, be, <clears throat> to not betray him. And Judas decides not to. But what I want to encourage you guys all with is that Jesus can sympathize with all the ways that we are tempted and all the ways that we may feel pain. But as well, Jesus died for Judas. Jesus died for you, died for your sins. No matter where you are at in your relationship with God, whether you are, you know, at the beginning, you're kind of hearing it, seeing this video, or, or you are seasoned in the faith, wherever you are at, repent of your sin. Jesus is there waiting. The Lamb of God is there waiting to, to forgive you, to love you. How amazing is grace. Love you guys. God bless you. And I cannot wait to see you guys on Good Friday or Sunrise or Easter Sunday.